The really nice thing about this is when you're done, it record the recording converts automatically to, I think it's an MP4 or an M4V, and then you can upload that to YouTube very easily, and then I can share it on our website pretty quickly as well. The really nice thing about this tool is you get 40 minutes free with any number of people. You get as long as you want free one-to-one. -one. Um, I would not recommend having to pay for it, especially if you have Skype that's available if you're gonna be doing like two hours with 20 people or something. Mm -hmm. But what you can do with this then is you can do screencasting. So you're able to show people how to do something, or walk through a document or a PowerPoint really easily and record that so you have those features for this week when you're doing looking at video and in two weeks whenever you're making video is it this week you're making video um but whenever you're making your video on that you can use this as your screen recording your screen casting apparatus that'll work um because this is interactive multimedia it is a really fantastic tool obviously camtasia has nicer features you can add the hot links and things like that um youtube video manager has and video editor has a lot of really nice tools now as well but this one is um, pretty easy to use and pretty self-explanatory. I know I talk fast, so I apologize. If I'm going too fast, tell me to stop. When I was in the classroom, I would tell the kids, you know, whoa, Nelly. So, <clears throat> two seconds about me, and then we will jump right in. Um, I'm Jen Weibel. I just finished my second year at Central Michigan. I was at Punxsutawney, home of the Groundhog, in Pennsylvania, February 2nd every year. Um, yes, I have seen Phil. It is real. They keep one in, that, you know, in there and one behind, so if he ever croaks, then you don't know that. You think that he is 100 and some years old. Um, I have touched him, he's very mean. They wear chain mail and he has peed on me. So there's my whole statistics about that. I taught chemistry and physics, physical science at Punxi for 23 years. I did their K-12 tech integration for 10 years. I ran their LMS support, their grade book support, and um, classroom support for a lot of the buildings. Um, via phone or via video. While I was doing this, we had five and one point five elementary schools, middle school, and the high school. We also had a virtual program, so I developed courses and taught on there and taught all the tech camps for the last twelve years that we've done in the summer. So, when it comes to you using these tools in your classroom, um, I really love you showing me new uses and new things. If you notice, I didn't comment a whole lot in the grade book. All of your stuff's graded now. Okay, unless you didn't give it to me, it's graded. Um, I commented a little bit on some of your blogs, and then I commented within the grade book on some people's if accident closed a window or thought of something after that or whatever. Um, you're doing a fantastic job, really. You, you guys are really doing a good job with this. Um, so with this class though, with the interactive multimedia, I like it to be a very pedagogy based class where you create these tools that you can use at some point in your class or in a training or in your work environment or something like that and then you can um, utilize them and you, you know you get the practice building them and then you can take them into your classroom or your setting or whatever and you can work with them there so that's the reason it's set up like it is you will be sick of the principles by week eight because every week it is the same prompt on the blog that is by purpose because by the time you get to week eight, you're doing a lot of things at the same time, and I don't want you to be having to think about what you're writing so much. Do keep in mind that you can make this prototypey. It does not have to be perfect. If you have a few misspelled words, or you have something that you've fleshed out the idea, and you've got the basic requirements, but it's not perfect, it's okay. Especially if you let me know whenever you submit your link for your blog. Hey, you know, I'm working on this, I've got a better idea, I'm building on this still. All the requirements are there, but it needs a little finessing. Your lesson plan idea, you do not have to write me three page lesson plans, although I do appreciate it. You can write me the sketch of the lesson plan. Here's the objective, this is how I think it's gonna work, done, okay? Because um, I know that a lot of you are reading, a lot of you are um, testing out new tools, some of you are um, a little concerned about the time requirements because of that, um, email me as soon as you think that you're hitting a wall with something email me I'm honestly 99% of the time I am flying back on the email quick even in the middle of the night if I wake up I'll check it okay I'm addicted I know um, so I get really back I get back to you really quickly so if you think that you are really getting frustrated before you decide to throw your computer off your balcony um, you need to email me and say this is not working somebody did say that last week two weeks ago um, 
So let me know, we can walk you through, we can find you another tool. Some people's systems don't let them work with others as nicely. Um, if I suggest two or three tools and you wanna use something that's gonna do the same purpose, use it, tell us about it. It's a great thing, put it on the Padlet, you get 20 point, up to 10 points for 10 links on the Padlet. Um, and those are really awesome, cool tools because if you click on the Padlet and get the address, you have that forever. You have your blogs forever. You have this personal learning network of people. That, and I mean, you guys have a fantastic cohort. I have to say, I'm really sad that I probably won't teach you again as you're moving through because you guys have been really great so far. Um, so all of these things are built so you have them outside of the class. So when the class is over and Blackboard shuts down your class in two, in two years, they wipe the shelves clean to save on memory, you'll still have this network of people's lessons that you can say, Oh, somebody did a lesson with that. I remember that from two years ago and you can go pull it off of their, of their blog page. So um, that's kind of my, my reasoning behind these things. Like I don't make you do extra work because I think you need extra work because I know what a teacher really does. Um, so I do them most of the time they are, have a specific pedagogical goal or theoretical goal that's gonna be pushing you to think about things a certain way or do things or try things. So that's that. Now. With that being said, do you have any questions or comments about the first two weeks, three weeks of class? So far you had the Padlet, the digital imagery, the infographic. You can just pop right in there. Okay. <laughs> it's not a lot of wait time. I should probably count to 10 again, but. Um, all right, the second week, this fourth week that you're doing now is looking at video. So you are finding a video and you're evaluating it, you're saying, this is one I would use in my class, this is not one I use in my class. So you do not have to spend six hours, and I'm saying this from experience of someone taking the class, spending six hours to find the perfect video for their class so that they could give all tens, not the purpose. The purpose is, you know, you go into, you know you're going into class tomorrow, and you know that you have five million pieces of paperwork that are due back to the office by the end of the day, and you have grades to do and finals to grade, and you need the kids to have this really great activity they can do in class that's gonna teach them stuff, but you know you don't have time to build all your own resources. So you go to YouTube and you Google search something, or you Google search something and a video comes up and you're like, mm, it's a seven, I'll use it this year, next year I'll find a better one. That's fine. Look through your top 10 results, find one you think you might use, evaluate it. Do not spend three hours looking for a perfect video. The rest of this, um, with the assignment, I'm going to show you how this works now. On the Zoom tool, whenever you go to the bottom of the page and it says share screen, and all of you would have the option to share screen. You have the desktop, you have a whiteboard, you can show from an iPad or phone, and you can also show, sorry, it does not, there we go. You can see your screen. So this is your class, and this is how I see your class. Um, this is showing you just the um, web, web browser that I have up. You can also see the back screen. So anything you're displaying on your computer, you can use and you can record this. That's why I said this is really great for screencasting. All right, so within the course materials, before you're using video. All right, so you are going to evaluate a video, you're going to create a video, and you're going to think about creativity. Okay. How many of you have already seen Sir Ken Robinson in previous videos? I have. Yeah? Um, this is the very first thing that I saw. I'll stop showing there, because I can't see you. <laughs> this is the very first thing that I saw whenever I started taking my, my master's program 10 years ago. Um, that they had a, a little bit of Ken Robinson. It wasn't the TED Talk at the time um, that they showed us, but thinking about creativity and how that plays out in school. And that's one of the things that got me really interested um, because when I started, I actually, one of my friends reminds me all the time that I said, I don't want a stupid education degree. I'm not going back and paying for a master's that I'm never gonna do anything else with. It's stupid. And so I took two classes because I wanted to know what to do with the computers they dumped in my room. And then from then I was like, I need two more classes because I don't know enough. And then pretty soon I was applying for the doctoral program at Penn State. And then pretty soon I had a sabbatical and you know, now I'm here. 
But that creativity is what sparked it, the initial beginning with me. All right, so this week you are going to evaluate your found video. You're gonna look through a bunch of different things. You can screencast. You can use Paltoons and create an animated thing. If you're using Paltoons, I suggest you look really carefully because some of the backgrounds are pay for backgrounds and it won't let you publish it. If you use a pay for background, but it will let you build it. It's sneaky. I'm gonna tell you, do not pay for any tool that you use in this class, okay? If you want to use your trial membership on the things, you can, but don't pay for things. Then if you wanna use them down the road, you can't. You, you don't, you've already used up your, your trial. So I've given you a lot of free tools. You're welcome to find other ones. Anything else you know, um, you know, I think there's like a $3 do ink or something like that that people have been talking about a lot. Flipgrid is another one that is fantastic. Have you heard of Flipgrid? No, I'll drop a Flipgrid in class so you can play with it. You can look at it. Um, they give you a classroom for free. They give you one grid for free. You have to pay 65 a year, I think, for the full set of it. But the, the one is free. And you can do a pile of stuff with the one. I'll drop one in class for you. You write it down so I don't forget. It's also another video tool that allows you to do like a video discussion board. You post a topic, they say what they're talking about, and then they respond to you in that. So that it's pretty nice. Um, you can use this Zoom to do a screencast. You can do a PowerPoint that is animated and you do the video, you know, where you talk over it and do the video at the end of it. I don't care what you choose to do. You're gonna pick something you would use as a lesson, you're gonna build a video, okay? A lot of people like to do the Paltoons, the, the um, animation one. It's pretty cool, but you have to just be really careful that you don't end up with a pay screen, so you have to pay to publish it after you've already done it all. Um, then after you have done the several video techniques and looked at them, you're gonna make your own instructional video. Um, there's a couple requirements with it. It'll get posted on your blog. Most of you will have to load it onto YouTube before you post it on your blog. You can also use, um, do it as a link and you can load it into a Google Drive or load it into a Dropbox and store it there if you do not want it on YouTube, even if it's set to like um, with some privacy settings so it's not open to the world. Um, they will link to your blog, but they probably will not upload to your blog where it's embedded and nice and you know where you can just see it within the page. I don't care. As long as I can get to it, I am fine with it. Okay, so that's all with your comfort level with where you want your stuff to be out, if you want it on YouTube or if you want it somewhere else. All right, so that's pretty much the requirements for it. Any questions on requirements for the class this week? There's three separate pieces. One's explore, but there's three separate pieces that you have. Evaluate, explore, build. Um. Go ahead. Uh, uh, everything's due Sunday, right? Yeah, everything's due Sunday. Okay, just just making sure. Yeah, and if you have some like major catastrophe, like um, you know, um, Central Michigan locks you out of your entire account, <laughs> you know, that has happened. Um, yes. That's fine. Email me and let me know, or even just you know, post it as soon as you can and email me and tell me what the problem was. All right, um, just making sure. Yeah, not a problem. Everything's due Sunday night until the very last week. That one I have to end class on Friday because grades are due the next week. Like they're due, class ends on Friday and they're due I think Monday. So Monday or Tuesday. So um, the last week, the eighth week of the class, that class ends on Friday. And that gives you your two days off before you start your next one. If you're running. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we want to talk about creativity. How do you guys use creativity in your classroom? And I will wait time on you on this one. So. How do you, do you use creativity in your classroom? Do you talk about it? Do you value it? Some of you are art people, so I better hear some. I'm an art teacher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two of you, right? Maybe not that's here, but there's two in, in the class, I think. I'm also I'm an here. art teacher. <laughs> okay. I remembered from that. All right. So you guys use creativity. So talk a little bit about that. And then we will let other people chime in on how they use creativity within subject areas. I give a lot of choices, even though a lot of my projects are the same for students, but I don't expect them to all look the same. So mm -hmm. lots of choices. Yeah. 
How about you? Nicole or Dallas, I don't remember your first name. <laughs> oh, sorry, Andrew. Um, Andrew. Okay. I, yeah, I, I was going off my uh, blog post. Um, for me, I do a lot of uh, formative assessment. So a lot of it's based off of students that I know and that I, students that I don't know. So students that I do know, I expect them to grow compared to the last year. I expect them to uh, not only research ideas, but um, kind of based off the Creative Commons, I've, I've used TED Talks in the past. And one is how to steal like an artist. And it's not, imitation is not flattery. Um, that was kind of the whole point of it. Uh, students can um, steal ideas, but adapt them to and, and manipulate them to make their own uh, objectives and make their own uh, statements. So. And Nicole, you said you teach art as well, right? I do elementary. So um, we're a little bit more structured because we're still building on foundations. But um, I also do a lot of choice-based um, assignments. We have a lot of um, centers where it's student-centered um, and they, they make their choices on where they want to go. Um, and then there's um, a set of instructions with each center and um, a, a rubric that goes along with grading that and um, you know, a complete assignment that sort of goes with it. And so often there's students doing different assignments at the same time throughout the room, but um, at the end of the year, they've all covered um, like all of the basics, the basic skills and art history, things like that. We also do critiques even in elementary school, which um, I think encourages a lot of creativity because they're looking at each other's artwork, they're getting ideas from each other, and then they're sharing their ideas um, in like a talking environment. Mm -hmm. I think that helps. How about the rest of you? The rest of you are more content based. Do you use creativity in your classrooms? Do you talk about it? Do you show that you value it in any way? And there's not a wrong answer here. I, I just I, did a cardboard challenge and we took away uh, the rubric for all the students and the teachers. So they were asking, how, the, the, the challenge was to build a Model T Ford uh, of cardboard and duct tape. And we had three different classrooms from around the state doing this. And they all wanted to be told how to make it. But we only gave them like, like uh, the, the basic guidelines of what they needed to do and, and a deadline. And that was uh, eye-opening because everybody is used to being told uh, how to do it and what color it's supposed to be and how tall it's you know. So it was a, a neat experience for everybody involved. But the creativity from the students uh, really uh, sh shine through because of that. How about any of the rest of you? I, I use creativity, creativity a lot in writing um, with kindergarten. I teach kindergarten. So um, I'll oftentimes like give them sort of a list of things like, you know, make sure you have finger spaces or make sure you have, you know, your word wall word spelled right. Um, but I won't necessarily give them a topic. So they have, you know, freedom to be creative in their writing. Um, but also with science, um, I've had them create mazes before. Um, and when we did speed and velocity, they had to create um, different car tracks and um, things like that to show what they were learning. Okay. Would anybody else like to share how they use creativity in their classroom? Going off of the uh, the writing, I teach first grade, so we just got done doing our uh, final writing projects, and it was all off of um, animal researching. And so we gave them, you know, general habitat, family, to general topics like that, and then we kind of let them do whatever they want in order to get the information out to us. So we kind of, I mean, I know I have stronger writers, and I have better artists in the class. So I kind of just let them do what they needed to to get the information to me. Awesome. I feel like we as teachers use creativity all the time, though. Like, we sort of have to be creative people in order to reach all of our students. Yes. 
you know, like not everybody learns the same way. So we're always thinking on our feet and coming up with creative ways to reach every student. I think a lot of that has to do with passion though too, because it's not just about creativity. Some students don't uh, like math, but they might be a good writer. Some students might not like writing, but they might be good at math. So it, it, creativity is not just based off of a solo subject. I mean, it can span wide ranges, so. Kind of going off of what you just said, uh, I just started, um, I'd say about a month and a half ago, math journals and each student got, they get the same, um, I guess, problem to solve, but how they solve it is completely up to them. They get to, you know, either draw out a picture for me or some, I have one kid who's really high in math, so he likes to write out the story like of how he solved it. So kind of going like with that, they just get to choose what they do as long as they can get to the solution. This is awesome. I'm seeing so many common themes with what you're all talking about, even those of you that are not talking, you're kind of shaking your head a little bit or smiling, you know, even just a little sliver of it. Um, a lot of you are talking about creativity is allowing students the freedom of choice and that their products are not necessarily going to be the same, that they're going to contain the same information um, and those kind of things. Um, so I think that that's really interesting that all of you are pulling this uh, kind of similar theme with that. Now here's my question to you. How do you grade this? Do you grade it? Can you grade creativity? I think you can to an extent. Um, I mean, I judge how, I give them a basic rubric, you know, for example, this research project, they needed to tell me what is their family like? So if they drew me a picture of their family, I grade them off of that. If they wrote to me what a family looks like in their animal, I grade it off of that. And it's, you know, I mean, since I'm just in first grade, they're very basic grading, but um, if you give them a general outline of what you're gonna be looking at, students can take it from there. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a screenshot so I have attendance. If, if you go off of what kind of marks um, creativity project with the uh, Ford Model T cars. If you if you give a general rubric, but don't tell them exactly what to do, it's more of a formative assessment rather than uh, you know it's it's qualitative versus uh, quantitative. So um, the observation process, seeing someone's engagement in the process, not just well, yes, I can answer to what's two plus two, but can you do everything else with it? It's applying the knowledge that you learn, not just knowing the knowledge. It's easy to memorize something, but to apply the knowledge is something in its own. How about any of you that have not talked tonight? Would you be interested in sharing how you look at, a, at creativity in your classroom to grade it? I mostly grade based on the standards. It's hard to grade. I teach math, so the creativity part, it's basically the real world application, how they can apply those standards. So I guess I'm checking to see if what they're applying it to matches the standards. Jenna, I thought you were going to say something. Or am I putting you on the spot? <laughs> nope, okay. Anybody else have any thoughts on it? And I'll tell you how a couple other people have done it and how I've done it in the past. Um, sorry. Been waiting to respond. I'm trying to put out a fire here, trying to get it's okay. to the conversation and screaming. So, um, I think that in order to grade creativity, you have to have some kind of um, way to tell if they've actually answered the question or um, perform the task, or um, if they've really accomplished what the whole goal was. So, if they have a goal in mind at the end whatever way they get to that goal, as long as they've accomplished the goal, I think you can grade them on, did they get there? Um, I have my ninth graders right now in English writing a problem solution paper, so they got to decide what problem they wanted to try and solve. And so I think that was a bit of creativity for them. They got to decide what was important to them. And we did like a br big brainstorming activity all together um, beforehand about what were some issues that were important to them and talked about it. Um, but I think that if you're 
going to grade it, you can't grade on how creative they were or weren't because some kids' ideas of creativity are uh, much different than others. Um, but you have to, I think, grade it based on if they accomplished what you wanted them or they got where you wanted them to be at the end. Any thoughts on what she said? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think if they've reached the end goal, then that's what you grade it. You know, you grade it based on that. Okay, so I'm not disagreeing with you. And jump in at any time if you have thoughts on this. How I have seen it happen in classrooms to grade on creativity, and I taught chemistry and physics and physical science. So, I mean, I wasn't teaching um, anything that's typically associated with a lot of creative, uh, creativity or anything like that. Um, but what we were doing is setting up our rubrics so that if you did all the requirements and met your goal, you had a 95%. And that extra 5% was going above and beyond. Maybe it was doing, maybe you're not an artist, but you did a really neat, carefully done project that had extra pieces that were included in it that you, you know, went a little above and beyond. Or maybe it was, um, instead of turning in an essay, you did, you know, a slam poetry essay. Or maybe why well, bought kids bring in guitars one day and their whole drum kit. I did not realize that that was all coming in. And they had guitars and a drum kit and a singer. And they had their entire song about their periodic table family set to music and played. Okay. So those are things that, I mean, that's 5%. But if you give them the opportunity, sometimes you're going to get really great things. The other thing I found out people are doing, and I hadn't thought of this before, but they post like the best example of something that they get from, from a kid that's you know really creative and really well done. And they post that and they say, this is a really nice example of it. You know, I, I think you guys are, well, are easily capable of going above and beyond this. And if you're setting the standard pretty high, a lot of times you're able to push them to do that extra because they see it modeled in whatever it is that you happen to have there. So that can sometimes help a little bit as well. Um, but those are a couple ways I've seen structured in a regular classroom to add in a little component for creativity where you're not grading them on if they're a good artist, if they're a music, if they're a good writer, those kind of things um, in addition to meeting your classroom goals. So that's how I've seen it structured there. Another way to foster creativity that I've seen, um, a couple of teachers that I have worked with and that actually had, I had in class three semesters ago, um, the ones in class, they had a um, checklist and that you had to have, you know, two of this type of assignment, two of this type of assignment, two of this, then by the end of the semester, or by the end of the nine weeks, it added up to 100 points. And so if you wrote just a normal essay, maybe you got 10 points for your like creativity points. And if you did a video production of something, you got 50 points. And you could only do so many of them, you know, whatever, that it's structured so that you could do, of the five assignments, maybe it had, up, had to add up to 50 points. The students were always choosing another medium, maybe that was one out of their comfort zone. And for the most part, they had choice on when they did it. So if they really knew their topic, maybe they would pick to do a video this time because they aren't so sure about video. Or if they're really shaky on their topic, maybe they just want to do a straight out infographic or poster or something like that. So giving the students the freedom of choice, even though they have to give you the same content, is one way that you can kind of foster the creativity in your classroom and get through all of your objectives that you have to get through by the time you have to take the test at the end of the year. So I do understand all the constraints <laughs> that you get put on you as a, as a classroom teacher. Um, so those are just a couple pieces with that. Now we have about five, six minutes left, eight minutes left, I'm sorry, that we have in class. So if you have any questions you wanna to add to this conversation, we can go ahead and it looks crickets. It's my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, okay, then if you have anything else, it's half an hour of your time. If you have anything else that you want to ask me about or talk to me about, please feel free to hang out afterwards. And we can kind of go through. If we run out of time, I'll start another Zoom session because I only have a free one. So we're going with oh, my husband. He knows I'm on here. He doesn't see me. <laughs> Phone's on speaker. Um, so anyway, you can stick around. We can talk about it. I will tell you next week, 
is um, augmented learning. So we're looking at QR codes, which are fine to use, or AR, augmented reality, using Erasma, or you can pay for layer, but I'm not paying for layer to see it. Um, so we've done a lot of kind of interesting things with that, and I have some examples of what other people have done. So um, that one's probably the most out there. So if you are kind of feeling tech challenged already, and you want to, um, I can drop a help session in next week if you if you feel, feel the need. So just kind of email me if you think that um, looking over the assignment next week, that we're not planning on this. So next week, if you're having some issues or you think you might have issues, let me know and I'll schedule a help session for us. Okay? All right. Other than that, it was great to see all your faces. And even though a couple of you did not talk at all, um, that is fine. And I will you know, be talking to you on your blogs and in the comments and things like that. And have a good night. To leave this. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. To leave the meeting, you click on the bottom oh, right yeah. corner. It says, and it'll say like, leave this meeting. And you can just hop on out of there. Or if you want to stick around, then you can stick around and we can talk. Thank you. Yeah, have a great night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Okay, so we're slowly clicking down. Questions that you guys have, or are you just having trouble getting out of here? Well, I'll say if anybody else is staying. Okay. <laughs> you know me, Mark. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, so Jen, just a quick question about the Zoom. Yeah. Like you can use it for free, but it's like only a 40 minute time slot. Is that how it works? 40 minute time slot for Zoom for free with any number of people. If it is you by yourself or it is you and one other person, I've been on Zoom meetings for four hours before. Because we just used like a very expensive uh, program last week for the cardboard challenge. And this is way easier and more clear. Um, I'm feeling kind of bad that the, the ISD had spent money on the, the well, program. I mean, we use Collaborate in, at Central Michigan and Penn State just went to Canvas for their LMS and they went to Zoom for their conferencing platform. So it's picking up traction and doing it. If you can do it in 40 minute chunks and just have repeating windows every 40 minutes, like open a new meeting every 40 minutes, you can run sessions all day with like, I think up to 50 people or up to 40 people for free. So it's nice. Yeah. And I was sticking around to see if Matt was going to say anything. <laughs> yeah, Matt, come on. I didn't say anything either. Something, but, right? You wanted me to say something or is it anything? Um, you spoke. <laughs> so I take it you guys have been in classes together. Yeah. Too many. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go yeah. finish up my work from last week. I'll see you guys. All right. See you, everybody. Yeah. You post your link, and I'll regrade, Mark. All right, thank you. Yeah, not a problem. Okay, I think Matt is – Matt, are you leaving, leaving, or are you – Mark? I think he's leaving, so I'm just going to boot him. Hey. Hi, Leanne. It's just you and me now, and I am turning off the video.